Well, today is Ascension Sunday, and our colic for the day began with those wonderful words, O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. This day is the final Sunday of Easter, the season which, of course, celebrates our resurrection, resurrected Lord and how he was present to so many after rising from the dead. And so every year, preachers on this day try to say something about the ascension of Jesus, which, of course, is no easy challenge. A couple of months ago, a friend of mine, though, sent me back a sermon that he and others receive in my weekly email sermon send-out, which he received an awfully long time ago, mentioning that he had found it again and that it had actually meant something to him. And I had forgotten this sermon entirely, and so assuming you have also forgotten this sermon, <laughs> I'm going to retell the lion's share of it. It is something unusual, but I do want to repeat it. Because, quite frankly, after I reread it, I said, yes, I really believe this stuff. It was in the year 2007 that this friend, Bud Stevenson, who now lives in Utah, wrote the following in response to my weekly mailing, which must have occurred during the season of Easter. He said, you mentioned what should be our everlasting devotion and gratitude for Christ's resurrection. This is not a challenge intended to set off Christianity's most lengthy debate. I'm just curious on a personal level. If Christ was resurrected, where is that body now? Well, I need to mention that my friend is a committed Christian. He's a lawyer, he's a PhD in psychology and a professor emeritus at Weber State University. So one might call him a fairly smart guy. And my answer, of course, is, Bud, the answer to your question is that he ascended. Unfortunately, that probably is not enough for this gentleman who again asked specifically, so where is the body of Christ? Some years ago, there was a historian by the name of Socrates, not that particular Socrates, but a different Socrates, who was a Greek church historian. And this fellow and several others, including the great orator St. John Chrysostom, recorded the fact that during the fourth century, the Feast of the Ascension began being much celebrated in the church. As if it anticipated my friend's question, where did Jesus go? The day marked that moment when Christ's human nature was taken up into heaven, where he now exercises all power in heaven and earth with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Last Thursday, being the Feast of of the ascension, we heard in the gospel according to Luke the following. Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he blessed the disciples, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. And so for the last 1,700 years, that has been the story that's been told to generation upon generation upon generation on Ascension Day. Yes, but where did Jesus actually go? I'm going to get to that. But I want to tell you one other thing about Bud Stevenson. Nine years ago, when I talked to my friend who then was living in St. George, Utah, which is all the way down uh, towards the south of the state near Las Vegas, he told me that his beloved dog, Willow, had died the night before. Bud and his wife, Karen, had found this lost or abandoned dog while hiking on a trail many years ago and for over a decade and a half. They loved and nurtured and cared for this pup as would any parent for a child for which the end of the earth was but a modest distance to travel to take, make this creature's life one which was filled with comfort and joy. 
And along the way, true to their faith, obedient to their God, they remain committed to also alleviate the sufferings of others. With Willow the dog, they would make life more liberating, more decent, more joyful, more just, more gracious, more faithful, more fulfilling than it would have been had they not stepped upon the scene. Crazy in love with this canine castaway, Bud and Karen would journey through all those years, not perfectly, of course, but passionately, engrossed in the belief that it was through love that the goodness and graciousness of God could be made manifest in a world that, of course, is so painfully resistant to change. This threesome and another dog would steadfastly trudge along doing what they could to make a positive difference in the lives of those with whom they came in conduct, contact. I'm one of those. Seeking and serving Christ. As our baptismal vows say, they've touched and continue to do so, so many, that it really is hard to see that when it comes to the ministry of caring where Christ ends, and they begin, for they've been an embodiment of good news to so many. But I digress. Where did the body of Jesus go? Well, over the last weeks, we've had several readings from the book of Revelation describing the kingdom of God, and I suppose those images are probably as good as any to say where he is. But there's one thing for certain. He's not stuck there. I think he's elsewhere. I think he ascended into and quite frankly became the body of the church. In other words, if you are looking for the body of Christ, this ascended Jesus, you can find him in the same fellow who had the stamina to build those two houses for Habitat for Humanity over in Columbia Falls. He held the hand of a high school senior taking an exam, hoping that it would render a grade that would get him into college. He's the one who went into South Central Los Angeles and hugged a grandmother with encouragement who is raising her extended family to resist gang violence. He stood next to a gurney in an emergency room at a hospital while a teenager came down from a high brought on by the drug ecstasy which her date had used to spike her Coca-Cola at the prom. And he mourned yet another day passing which still held that one out of five kids in our nation lives in poverty. Where did the body of Christ go? It's quite simple. He made lunch for the homebound who received meals on wheels, and then he rode in a Flathead County Sheriff's patrol car through the uncertainty of a night. He comforted a child, not so certain about the possibility of monsters in the closet, but maybe perhaps under the bed. And he held a sick old man anxious about dying, and thus nursed him into everlasting life. Needless to say, he's been busy this ascended Jesus, and of course you can find him today seated next to you in the totality of everybody assembled in this church and elsewhere this morning. Yes, after all of these wonderful Easter appearances that we've been reading about, he has risen into the kingdom of heaven. And what makes that so interesting is that the kingdom of heaven is now upon us. So here he is in all the folks around you, and in you, and in me. I was going to email my companion in Christ living in Utah an answer to his question, but then I thought nine years ago, well, why not just send him my Ascension Day sermon? So, dear friend Bud, let me again add the following to finish my response to your question of nearly a decade ago. Not only has Jesus ascended into heaven, and yes, I admit, I don't quite know what that looks like, but I know that he's ascended into heaven right here on earth as well. And you, along with all of us, are part of his body.
And if none of the above makes persuasive sense, you may be certain of his presence in your mind's eye, asking your late beloved dog Willow something. And you can do that, because as Martin Luther once said, looking at his pet dog, and even thou will have a golden tail. So ask him the following in prayer. Nearly two and a half decades ago, when Karen and I picked you up, hungry, tired, lost, alone, frightened, and thirsty, who did you take us to be? And why did you come along with us? And I'm again betting this Sunday's entire collection on the fact that Willow will mystically reply to you why I took you as the risen and ascended Jesus. Who else could you possibly be? And so, my friend, once again, there is the answer to where I think you will find the resurrected body of Christ. Amen.